even renewable energy so-called experts, I've argued with them in um, public conferences, a lot of them claim that renewable energy, it doesn't really work 100% of the time. It's, well, it's going to be an issue. They even say things like, you know what, without baseload from offshore wind power, it, it, it just doesn't work. Now, that's actually completely false. In fact, what is insanely awesome is that what I've been saying for a long time, and I know a lot of you guys have as well, batteries and solar can do the job. We don't need any offshore wind. Don't get me wrong, offshore wind's good. We just don't need it. 90% of the world's population lives on the sun belt. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to have you with us. If you'd like to become a YouTube member and get perks like access to some videos I have coming up about uh, what I think are some of the smart play investments, then you can click on a link in the description below and become a member. The United Arab Emirates is building the world's largest solar and battery storage project. It will dispatch clean energy 24 hours a day, 24 seven. Hang on a minute, say the experts, that's not possible. Without wind or without nuclear baseload, it doesn't work, but it does actually. It definitely does. Tony Sieber has been saying now for more than a decade that it works and it hasn't been until recently that we've seen evidence that he was 100% correct. Emirati renewable energy company Mazda are developing the trailblazing solar and battery storage project that is actually the biggest in the world. Once it's online, it will become the largest combined solar and battery energy storage system that we've ever seen. But, I mean, while it will be the largest when it's online, it won't be the largest for very long because we, we know numerous pro similar projects will be built and completed, you know, just after this date. Located in Abu Dhabi, the project will feature a 5.2 gigawatt solar plant coupled with a 19 gigawatt hour energy storage battery. Dr. Sultan Al Jabbar, Minister of Industry and Advanced Technology and Chairman of Mazda said this, for decades, the biggest barrier facing renewable energy has been intermittency to be able to source uninterrupted clean power day and night. That has been a challenge. In collaboration with EWEC and our partners, we will develop a renewable energy facility capable of providing clean energy around the clock. For the first time ever, this will transform renewable energy into a world-leading one gigawatt of reliable base load. Hang on a minute, base load. What do you mean? But it's solar and batteries. Exactly. The batteries work as the base load. And that will be provided constantly, at least one gigawatt of power, 24 hours a day. This is the first step, which will become a giant leap for the world, said Abu Dhabi. And I agree with them. They're 100% right. The rest of the world are going to see this battery and say, hang on a minute, I thought we had to have all this other stuff, but you don't. Mazda announced China's JA Solar and Jinko Solar, two of the world's largest solar panel suppliers and Chinese battery giant, of course, CATL, Tesla's main battery supplier, as the companies contracted to do the work. JA Solar and Jinko Solar will supply 2.6 gigawatts of solar panels each. India's Larsen and Tubro and Power China have been selected as preferred engineering procurement and construction contractors. So basically, China is building the battery. Mazda says the project will create 10,000 jobs and doesn't yet in indicate a projected completion date. But as you can imagine, this is being done by Chinese companies, so it will happen very, very fast. It's in Abu Dhabi. There's nothing holding it up. Bureaucracy is very minimal there. Um, everything I'm sure is signed and ready to go, and I'm sure they'll start building this and it will be done very, very fast, which is great news. And the reason that's great news is because the rest of the world does, to some degree, need to wake up. There's, there's grids around the world where there's countries, locations, states where we have so much sun. We're talking like 98% of the days of the year are sunny. There are many, many states around the world where 98% of the days get a huge amount of sun, enough sun to recharge a battery this size. So really, this is an absolute solution. We keep hearing all this stuff about nuclear. Nuclear is incredibly expensive. The latest nuclear project we're hearing about is in the UK. Apparently, it's going to cost more than 40 billion pounds. It's going to go over budget by a factor of three, and that's just normal for nuclear. Whereas projects like this will happen in about a year, they almost never, or well, they actually do never go over budget. They are built within their timeframes and they do what they say they're going to do. And one of the great things about new battery projects is they're using new, more advanced LFP batteries. 
that are much better than previous versions. And they're guaranteed, CATL guarantees their new batteries to last for 25 years and to have at least 80% of their original capacity after 25 years. That is a game changer. And it's probably part of the reason why some of these mega batteries are being built now. Companies are much more confident. Countries themselves are much more confident. The batteries will last for a long time. You're not going to get this battery coming in, setting fire to itself, like the LG Chem battery in the United States, and then having all these problems. New LFP batteries are much better than these batteries. They last longer, and they're really perfect for these desert-like locations. Now, like I said earlier in the video, if 90% of the world's population are living on the sunbelt, Abu Dhabi is obviously part of that sunbelt, then it stands to reason that a huge percentage of the world should do similar, should build out similar projects to this. We don't need the uh, other expensive options, which are much more expensive than this option, to really complicate the situation. I personally actually think the best solution is, these, these mega projects are great, but I think the best solution is to have everyone at home, at their houses, to have battery storage and solar on their roofs. And uh, if you could have be equal to grid, say cars running your house, you know, that would be a great solution as well. And I think governments around the world should be sponsoring that more. They should be really maybe providing something like a 50% discount on that kind of system. I think that would be better because then you don't need all this expensive grid work. The grids that already exist in many locations around the world, particularly in the West, would be able to handle that. Basically, you'd just be creating more power where that power is already going. Let me know your thoughts on that in the comments. News is flooding the internet. There's a whole lot of hype around this. Is it legit? Is it real? I think it is. The world's first self-charging supercapacitor actually harnesses solar energy with a staggering 63% efficiency. Now, to give you some context, the best solar panels in the world currently harness solar at around 25% efficiency. Mine are about 23%. You can get up to 25 now. This number of 63% does seem too good to be true, but here are the details behind these claims from some engineers. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to have you with us. Now, guys, I was just thinking to myself, imagine if my solar panels could harness 63%, 63% of the solar that I generate, the electricity that I generate, I could probably produce around about 300 kilowatts of electricity a day, and then I could buy 10 XPeng G6s and have a taxi fleet. Just fantasizing. A collaborative research team that has unveiled a high-performance self-charging energy storage supercapacitor that efficiently captures and stores solar energy is a significant advancement for sustainable energy. There's been a whole lot of hype around supercapacitors. There's a huge excitement around them, similar to what there is around nuclear now. A lot of that excitement has sort of faded away, but I think some companies are doing some pretty amazing stuff with them. Because we've kind of moved on from supercapacitors, there's a little bit less kind of buzz around them, but maybe that shouldn't be the case. 